Hello there, it's 2200 hours in Banjul. We are coming to you live from our studios. Here are the headlines. Our top stories this hour, President George Weyer assures his government's commitment to foster closer relations between Banjul and Monrovia as Gambian ambassador accredited to Liberia, Ali Uke Jame, presents his letters of credence. A diligent search for quality education, the Education Minister Claudiana Cole told schools in the Greater Banjul to get first-hand information on their state of affairs. Plus, the Gambia joins the rest of the world to observe of the International Day for Women in Maritime Industry. In sports, Fullness Sports launches a new football academy in Kunkujanketaya to promote grassroots football. Away from home, the first war crimes trial of a Russian soldier since the invasion began in Kiev. And Kenya's lake city of Kisumu played host to the ninth Afro-City um, Summit meant to implement the UN Agenda 2030 and African Union Agenda 2063. But those are the headlines and much more coming ahead with me, Fatu Elika Muloshi. Many thanks for joining us. Welcome to the news. Now, the Ghanaian High Commissioner to Sierra Leone, Mr. Aliuke Jame, who is concurrently um, accredited to Liberia as ambassador, has formally presented his letters of credence to President George Weah in Monrovia at a ceremony held at the Presidential Palace in Monrovia. Ambassador, uh, ambassador Jame also extended goodwill message from the Gambian leader, His Excellency President Adam Abaro. Here's an excerpt. The deputy head of mission as well as the head of the Chinese of the Canadian High Commissioner in the Syria and the Mr. Ambassador Jame, I welcome you to Liberia. Let me also express my satisfaction with the strong ties and cordial relationship between Liberia and the Republic of Ghana. Let me assure you that the government of Liberia will continue to foster close bonds and friendship, bilateral ties between our two peoples. My government will have to encourage the government of the Ghana to explore investment opportunity in Liberia, especially in the areas of tourism, trade, and agriculture. Please extend my greetings and best wishes to my brother, President Nancy Adama Barrow, President of the Republic of Ghana. And let me congratulate you on your preferment and assure you of my government support in working with you for the further strengthening of bilateral ties which already exist between our two countries. Ambassador there, Ali Uke Jame, presenting his letters of credence to the Liberian President, His Excellency George Weyer, at the Presidential Palace in Monrovia. Now, in another development, the management of the Gami Radio and Television Services, GRTS, wishes to inform its audience and the public that it is putting into service a new transmitter at its Abuko station on Saturday. In this connection, the television frequency from Abuko will change from 223.25 5 megahertz to 233.25 megahertz for our, vi our viewers. Management wishes to inform viewers that GRTS television will continue to be able uh, to be available rather on a satellite platform using EU Telsat satellite E16A. The parameters of this satellite remain the same. Viewers without a satellite dish will still be able to watch GRTS using the normal outdoor and indoor antennas. 
Away from that, a diligent search for quality education, the Ministry uh, or the Minister of Basic and Secondary Education, Claudiana Cole, has visited New Joshua Lower Basic School and several other schools in the Greater Banjul area to gather first-hand information on the state of affairs of institutions on the Herper view as the Ministry strives for quality as one of its set targets. Sa Sayin Abu Jain travelled with the top party and filed in this report. The first port of call by the Basic and Secondary Education Minister, Claudiana Cole, was at New Joshua Lower Basic, which has over 1,000 student population with dozens of staff. Minister Cole and Entourage visited the school to monitor ongoing construction of classrooms at the Holland Foundation. It is very important that I come and see what is happening, how things are going on, listen to their concerns, the concern of the administration, listen to uh, the problems they have, and uh, that will help me when I go back to my office to be able to look into those concerns, address them, and make sure that uh, teaching and learning will go on smoothly. The head teacher of the new Joshua Lower Basic, Mayang Boop, said the classrooms, if completed, would accommodate the school's growing population. Moop, however, appealed for the appointment for more security personnel in the school, saying the school has only one security officer. Latakuna Sabaji of a school with a population of over 2,400 students was also visited by the ministerial delegation. The principal of the school, Mr. Seiko Jalo, after commending MRC Holland Foundation and Mopsi for building new classroom blocks, equally shared progress and challenges facing the school. Well, I'm so grateful to receive the minister in my school today. Um, I'm sure she's also happy that uh, the school is going on normal. And uh, I've shared my challenges with her and uh, I'm very much optimistic that uh, come next academic year, most of the challenges I have will be addressed. Uh, most of the challenges we have here is uh, staffing. We have challenges in having the teachers we need in certain subject areas. Uh, most most of the technical subjects and the core subjects. The day's ministerial tour was wrapped up with a visit to Muslim Senior Secondary School Complex in Brusubi, which was originally situated in Banjo for more than four and a half decades. Vice Principal Fansu F. Bojang stressed the need for his school to have a bus to be used by students commuting from Banjo to Brusubi. You know, initially we were told that uh, we have 24 classrooms available for us here. But when we came, we discovered that only 16 classrooms are available. The other rooms are used by MRC Holland to keep their furniture there. And uh, that is a constraint for us. Because we are trying to get all those things, but uh, up to this time, we cannot get them. And this is why we cannot even get the labs for our science practicals. So at the moment, we don't have any science lab. We just we are able to get one room for the staff room, and then one for the home science room, and one for computer lab. So these are some of the things I believe the coming of uh, Honorable Minister will solve some of those things for us. In response, Minister Cole stated that the outcome of the visit would support her office to make informed decisions and policies earmarked to improve quality teaching and learning under conducive environments. I've had the concerns of the students, I've had the concerns of the management, and when I go back to my office, I will be discussing with my senior management team and we will see what we can do to improve on those areas of concern so that uh, everything will run smoothly and uh, the education of the students can continue and uh, they can get the most out of their schooling. for GRTS News. Moving on, the Gambia Maritime Administration has joined the rest of the world to commemorate International Day for Women in Maritime Industry. Observed on the 18th of May every year, the day is set aside to celebrate women in the industry. Jankaturi reports training visibility recognition, supporting a barrier-free uh, working environment is the global theme for this year's celebration. 
first of its kind in the history of maritime sector in the country and the world by extension. The gathering is meant to commemorate International Day for Women in Maritime. The day is set aside by the International Maritime Organization to celebrate women in the industry as well promote and sustain employment of women in the maritime sector. We also decided to join the international community in commemorating the day. As you are aware, the Gambia is a maritime nation. We have a vast coastline and we have a functional port. We are not a landlocked country. We are dependent on the sea for our goods. We are not just importing our, our goods, the goods that we use, we are also re-exporting. So that adds an extra layer to our importance as a maritime nation because other countries are dependent on us too for their trade. The commemoration is centered on the theme, training visibility recognition, supporting a barrier-free working environment for women in maritime. Binti Jala Sisa is the Director of Finance, Gambia Maritime Administration. Celebrations to also address skills development for women in the maritime sector. The Gambia Maritime Administration, in a bid to do that, organized a symposium as we are doing today to celebrate our special and wonderful women in the sector. In the Gambia, the role of women's participation in the maritime sector is often underestimated. According to officials, women's underrepresentation hampers sustainable development of the maritime industry. Deputy Director General Gambia Maritime Administration Osman Toure said his office will continue to put women empowerment at the core of his organization's strategic plans. Listen to, to this, we have a billing and, manage, uh, and administrative managers who are also women. GME will continue to put women empowerment at the forefront of our agenda and this is not just a pledge, it is indeed a matter of policy for the administration. Rahi Samajala served as the guest of honor at the event. Maritime is not a field that only men can and must excel in. Yes, it is male dominated with only 2% of the entire maritime workforce all around the world being female. But therein lies the problem. A lack of gender and skills diversity is killing off the maritime industry, which is failing to attract young men because if they can have jobs at the shore and be paid the same amount of money, who wants to sleep at sea? The commemoration climax was a symposium highlighting the need for women to be more visible and mainstreamed in the maritime community, on board and throughout the sector as a whole, and widely scale up women representation at decision-making levels. Jean Keture, Jatis News. Meanwhile, a two-day tax seminar for members of the Gambia Women Chamber of Commerce is underway in Bijilo. The training in taxation system of the country, laws, rights and obligations of paying tax is organized by the Gambia Revenue Authority. Usman Mane has the rest of that story. It is another major boost for the Gambia Women Chamber of Commerce in their quest to develop and improve the business environment for women entrepreneurs. The two-day seminar on taxation organized by the Gambia Revenue Authority will expose the taxation portfolio for entrepreneurs and businesses for members of the chamber. Overseeing the operational management of the GRA in delivering its mandate, the chairperson board of directors of the Revenue House underscored the importance of taxation to national development. With her slogan, GRA is our GRA, the responsibility is on the people and businesses to improve compliance with tax laws through voluntarism. Voluntary compliance. Um, this is what GRA is uh, promoting. So, but before you can voluntarily comply, you have to understand what is required from you. And that is what you, I want you to take very seriously today, uh, tomorrow, to understand what are your obligations. What are you required to do so that you can you can actually contribute to tax revenues. The government of the Gambia is strongly relying on the GRA for financing government projects in providing adequate socio-economic services through taxation. This cannot be maximized in the absence of small and medium enterprises championed by women entrepreneurs 
according to the Commissioner General of the Authority, Yankuba Dabo. The GRS strongly believe that the Gambia Women Chamber of Commerce can play a pivotal role in the form of advocacy to influence its members and the business community on the importance of tax compliance, which will go a long way to boost our revenue mobilization efforts. We also hope that this seminar will strengthen our continuous collaboration to support the implementation of government tax reform initiatives aimed at improving revenue collection for national development. The authority is in the process of implementing the two major object projects to facilitate international trade and e-commerce to ease the payment of taxes and duties. The Asikuda Wall and the integrated tax administration system called the ITAX. The president of the Gambia Women Chamber of Commerce, Nafi Bari, thanked the GRA for the training, which, according to her, will improve their understanding and compliance to laws governing taxation in the country. She believed that the country's economy cannot flourish without SMEs. Mr. Gabo is promoting um, the uh, welfare of Gambians through really trying to raise our own funds. We are also at the other end trying to bring up women so that they build their capacities, come together and also uh, contribute towards national development by paying their taxes. Uh, essentially, that's why we're here today. We come, we listen to them, we ask the relevant questions, we know what we want. All over the world, uh, we have seen uh, studies. What it says is that it's a small and medium enterprises that uh, come together and grow the economy. The two-day seminar is the second edition for women entrepreneurs in the promotion and advocacy campaign of the GRA as means to reach out to the population on tax education. Senior officials are expecting more women from this cohort to be awardees in their next tax compliance award. After this training, Usman Mane, GRTS. To the Lower River region now, who are the newly elected executive of the National Farmers Platform, who was recently inaugurated in Genoi in the Lower River region. The ceremony was graced by top officials from the Ministry of Agriculture and members of the Farmers Association across the country. Our correspondent in the region, Usman Balde, has the details. Members of the National Farmers Platform. We are finally inaugurated with an ambition of bringing all farmer association in the country under one umbrella. Mr. Bojang is the newly elected president of the association. We have so many in the Gambia that are operating independently. And the ministry and the projects are using most of those bodies who are not even representing the farmers. I can say who are not even representing the farmers to be the mouthpiece of the farmer organizations, which has to stop. We are not after anybody. What I'm saying is that I have asked the Deputy Permanent Secretary for him to convey my message to the Permanent Secretary that we want the Permanent Secretary as the umbrella head of all farmer organizations to bring us together so that we sit in one platform and iron out any problem that is within so that the farmer's platform can be one voice, all of us under one umbrella. So we have given her at least two weeks to do that. If not, we are going to put up a position paper with a petty, with a signatures from all farmers across the country, and that's going to be about 2,000 farmers are going to sign. We have a membership more than that, but we are going to get signatures from farmers and write a position paper on it and, 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 and address it to him for, him for him to look into our plight. And the camera from Forest and Farms Facility used the opportunity to outline the various assistance his organization rendered to farmers association in the country. Forest and Farm Facility is a program where uh, we support uh, forest and farm producer organizations. We started uh, FFF activities in the Gambia in 2013 up to 2017 and we are more focusing on uh, policy issues, uh, access to markets, and of course we've been also supporting them with uh, tenure issues. Uh, we had a second phase from 2018 to 2025. Actually the Gambia program started in 2021. Uh, this time we are focusing again more on policy advocacy uh, in terms of the involvement of uh, producer groups in policy advocacy and implementation. Officials, including the Deputy Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Agriculture, sort of their ministry's collaboration with the platform, which according to them, 
has been less effective. We have to be frank to ourselves. Governments have been struggling to make sure the agricultural sector is developed. Farmers are empowered. Farmers are equipped. Production is enhanced for this country to be able to sustain itself as far as good food is concerned. But it is still a challenge. Despite all the resources being pumped in the sector, it's still a challenge. Though we will say the necessary resources are not fully pumped, but donors are doing a lot. They are helping the government to be able to do a lot for this sector. We have to try to change our attitudes as beneficiaries. And that can only happen if you step in to help us sensitize your members. The farmers platform for the past three years was not functioning to expectation as a result of governance and management issues. But with the coming of the newly elected uh, executive committee under the leadership of a seasoned veteran technocrat by the name Horrible Sirfo Bojang, the platform is now shaping up and up running for the betterment of the smallholder farmers. The vision of National Farmers Platform is a sustainable and productive agricultural sector with farmers taking the role in decision making. This is also in line with the mission of the Farmers Platform, their role as a vehicle for advocacy, informing, annexing, and lobbying to influence government, private sector, donor efforts and initiatives for the benefit of the farmers. The Regional Agriculture Director for Lower River Region, Momodu Lamin Tabo, reminded members that the platform is meant for the development of agriculture-oriented, not political. Osman Balde, GRTS News. Elsewhere in the North Bank region, the Roots Project has handed over livestock materials to the Department of Livestock Services for onward delivery to small ruminant farmers. The event was held at the Department of Livestock Services headquarters in Kerawan. Our correspondent in the region, Farmer Abaji, tells us more. The activity is part of the implementation arrangements of RPSF Phase 2. Demba Sanyang, the regional coordinator for the Roots Project, described the donated materials as response for small ruminant farmers in the North Bank to cope the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, last week, we did the delivery of the poultry chicks to three beneficiaries. Today, we are doing the handing over of the three beneficiaries of the small ruminant, and these include goats and sheep. For that being the case, the Roots Project, through the RPSF support, is again doing this to see the impact of the COVID-19 being a minimal challenge to the regional farmers for that matter. Receiving the materials in Kerawan, Sajo Kra of the Department of Livestock Services said the intervention is very timely. The COVID-19 pandemic he went on affected many areas of the Gambia's economy, especially the livestock sector. We are um, actually wondering whether actually roots will come into um, supporting some component of livestock. And we have seen it happening now. We are very much uh, thankful to the regional uh, the, uh, the root coordinator and uh, his staff and uh, all um, those uh, um, supporting him um, uh, in implementing the the, the project. Um, it comes to this time that um, we are going to ha uh, hand over some materials to um, um, some farmers who are affected, although uh, everybody is affected. Most of my animals died during the COVID-19 pandemic due to the cross-border restrictions. I think this support will ensure recovery in my business. Amadou Kebe Jame, a beneficiary from Badi Budai, told GRTS. Appealing for more supports from authorities, Babukar Jame of Kergumbo said, oh, this is Nyan Nimbaldal. I have So we are legal in We are young people determined to stay in our country and contribute our quota in the national development process. So we challenge all relevant stakeholders to invest more into the livestock sector. 
The donated materials are expected to boost production and productivity of small ruminant animals in the North Bank region. For the news, I am Farmer Akani. By time now for our first break, sports news is up next. Stay with us. What keeps us connected? Is it the memories we share? Is it the pictures we take every single morning? Is it the bond that binds us? Is it the time we spend together? Is it sharing the same dream or the same life? The secret is this deep connection between us. Keep it real. Stay connected. Welcome back. Now, Fullness Sports has launched a new football academy in Kunkujanketaya in the West Coast region, a move to bolster grassroots football. The ceremony was graced by the governor of the region, Lamin Sane. Farmer Abaji has the details. Um, now, Kajem Young has been the mantra of football development at the grassroots level. One right place to attain such development is at the academies, where children are taught the basics of football. About grassroots football uh, development, it is the core for football development in anywhere you go in the world. So the serious nations in football focus more on grassroots football development, that is in academies. That is why when you look at FIFA new policies now, any player that make it to the professional level, that is what we call the solidarity contribution or the training compensation that goes down to the academy. This is the reason Fullness Sport decided to establish a football academy in this area. Something they said is geared towards contributing to the development of sports in the country. In order to make our contribution to the development of the country as well to the promotion and supervision of youth, we have undertaken the creation of a structure called Fullness Sport Academy. Through football, we can have peace. Through football, we can have cooperation. Through football, we can build our friendship. And this is, if you can see, when we all came here, all our attention was, uh, we are focused on who? Those are the kids. So therefore, if not football, all of us will be doing something different. Maybe I will be doing something that is even wrong toward, toward the society. But once we are in the field of play, in the field of sports, our focus is always on what? Sports as an entity. Today's event is yet another kind of great encouragement to the Minister of Youth and Sports, seeing our very young innocent athletes being brought together and try to develop their talents, their skills in this industry. I think this is really a worthy cause, like somebody had already just said. So we want to thank you so much and want to encourage uh, Fullness Sports Academy to continue the very good work uh, and that we want to assure them of government support through the Minister of Youth and Sports and uh, we will continue to ensure that the development of the young people of this great country you know is given a priority. The lunch ceremony culminated with a display of different drills as the children were introduced to different aspects of basic techniques which will henceforth become their daily routines. Founders call on the parents to be cooperative and support the football careers of their children. The advice that we have for the parents is to, to help their children to follow their dream. To follow their dream because you will see some players, they, they, they have a good talent, they like football, but they are alone, no one to support them. And that is not good because it's not good. We cannot do everything alone. We advise parents to support their kids. See, for example, 
Some kids, they are good. They don't have shoes. In football, you have to build up the child to have stamina, to have strength, to have ability. And this that they are doing are those components that we use in football to build up a child. So therefore, I want to, I want to implore on all parents to make sure they support Fullness Academy, especially our these young men and women who are from Cameroon. This group of young passionate footballers between the age of 9 and 17 will continue to frequently appear at this ground to learn football at a young age as Fullness Sports work towards producing possible professional footballers in the near future. The Academy, we want to, to train the legend. Because we know that here in the Gambia and in the Kunkunja, we can have many Sajo Manes, we can have many Samuel Eto here in the Gambia. That's why we are, we are working and uh, we always tell them that they have to play, they have to, they, 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 they have to be disciplined. Farmer Ababi. Here, this news. Well, we'll take another short break. We will be back with news from beyond our borders right after. Don't go away. Welcome back. Now, war crimes in Ukraine. First case against Russian soldier. To open in Kiev, Ukrainian prosecutors accused a 21-year-old Russian soldier of fatally shooting a 62-year-old unarmed civilian. If convicted, the defendant faces a life sentence. It's just one of thousands of alleged war crimes that have been documented so far. Details in this France 24 report. Ukraine has, in a way, the same issue as, as Russia, a sense that Russia is, uh, at least some people in Russia are putting pressure uh, on the authorities not to release anyone who could potentially be accused of war crimes. And the Russian media and propaganda have been accusing these members of the of regiment of war crimes uh, for, without providing any real evidence. The Ukrainian side has a certain number of Russian soldiers who are in detention who are accused of war crimes and for which the Ukrainian prosecutor's office says it very much does have evidence and wants to bring as many of these people to trial as fast as possible. They've gone for the option of trying to have these trials done quickly so that they can show, I think, the world and the Ukrainian media, of course, that they do have evidence, that they do have witnesses, at least in some cases. And this is a case where there are witnesses who apparently saw in the north of Ukraine, in Sumy region, Vadim Shishimarin, a Russian soldier, 21 years old, kill an unarmed civilian in that village. That's what he's accused of. We'll learn today what his defence and what his plea is going to be. Now, the opening ceremony of the 9th Afri Cities Summit was held in Kenya's western city of Kisumu. 8,000 delegates from across the world were in attendance to deliberate on the role of intermediary cities of Africa in the implementation of UN Agenda 2030 and the African Union Agenda 2063. More in this DWTV report. Delegates attended the opening ceremony of the 9th Afri Cities Summit held in Kisumu an intermediary city in western Kenya. Africa. The theme for this year's summit touched on the role of intermediary cities on the African continent in implementing the UN Agenda 2030 and the African Union's Agenda 2063. To welcome His Excellency. The chief guest, Kenya's President Uhuru Kenyatta, called for intermediary cities to play a bigger part in development. Time is right for scaling up the role of intermediary cities as the next frontiers of African urbanization and development. Keynote speakers stressed the need for a change in the urban agenda to protect future generations. More than 64% of the urban population in Africa live in informal settlements. There is a deficit of housing and housing finance with only 15% of urban dwellers in Africa. The reality of our continent is reflected in the way we treat our intermediate cities. Treat them well, and we will treat Africa's, African citizens well. An intermediary city is defined as one having a population ranging from 50,000 to a million people 
that connects rural and urban areas to basic facilities and services. The governor of Kisumu, the summit's host city, says they provide these linkages through a devolved system of government enshrined in Kenya's constitution. Intermediate cities also have... But well, over now to the weather report, courtesy of the Central Forecast Office. And before we end this newscast, a look at our top stories once again. The Liberian president to uh, President George Weah has assured his government's commitment to foster closer relations between Banjul and Monrovia as Gambian ambassador accredited to Liberia, Aliuke Jame, presents his letters of credence. A diligent search for quality education, the education minister, Claudiana Cole, has been touring schools in the greater Banjul area to gather first-hand information on the their state of affairs. Plus, the Gambia has joined the rest of the world to observe the International Day for Women in Maritime Industry. In sports, Fullness Sports has launched a few or rather a new football academy in Kunkujang Ketaya to promote grassroots football. Away from home, the first war crimes trial of a Russian soldier since the invasion has begun in Kiev. And Kenya's lake city of Kisumu has played host to the 9th Africity Summit meant to implement the UN Agenda 2030 and African Union Agenda 2063. Well, that's it for this hour. I'll be back again at 2200 hours for more news and updates. Until then, thanks for the pleasure of your company and enjoy the rest of our programs.